Hey, what's up? Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. Today I'm gonna to be making the, what I think is the second to last video. I got one more planned before I should have enough videos to actually be able to put together a good how to bench press complete guide. So we're almost all the way there. And I, I think I wanted to frame it that way because today's video seems to get an emotional reaction from a lot of people. It's something that people are taught so early in their lifting careers to do it one way, and I'm going to be telling you to do something the opposite way. This conversation happens all the time online, and it seems like the vast majority of people are stuck in the, what I will say is the bad way, so if you do have an emotional response to this, let's try to watch the whole video. If you have questions, put it in the comments. But like I said, this, this video right here should fit in the context of a lot of other videos and specifically that bigger how to bench press complete guide video that I do have coming. So let's try to, to put it all together into something that will make sense for people and we'll frame it that way. So the content of this video will be around retraction in the bench press retracting the shoulders. So to set up some of these definitions, I, I wanna talk about the different, um, I, I guess define the four different kind of simple movements around what your shoulders can do. So on a very basic level, if my arms reach forward, this would be protraction. So we'll say that it moves forward of midline, of neutral, right? Pulling backwards will be retraction, going up is elevation, coming down will be depression. So. When we're talking about retraction in the bench press, this is where people cue squeeze the shoulders. Sometimes we even hear things like spread the bar apart, break the bar in half across your chest. Just generally trying to put people in a position to where they're very much pinching their shoulder blades together. So I wanted to take a look at that and see if it's actually something that we should be trying to do and if there's any merit to it at all. So. To start off with, I think that we need to <laughs> pretty logically look at what the pecs actually do and really all of the pressing muscles in the bench press because those are going to be the primary movers, right? With any lift that we're doing, we have to think about first and foremost what muscles are actually going to be able to apply force into the barbell. So in this case, we have our pecs are going to be the primary ones, triceps, front delts, kind of shoulder area. Our back muscles are not going to be a prime mover, but we're gonna come back to that. So all of those function in slightly different ways. So what we can think about on a simple level is that my pecs are going to be adducting my upper arm. They're connected to my humerus. It's going to be pulling my arm towards midline of my body. My triceps will be extending at the elbow. So those two movements together should create that pressing motion. Pecs acting on my upper arm, pulling in, triceps spreading out. The big deal here is that the upper back muscles, mostly, you know, if we're talking about upper back muscles, we're talking about your traps, your rhomboids, your lats sometimes are a little bit different. They, they perform maybe a slightly different function, but still lats are going to be very much involved here. Those muscles act in contrast. They are antagonistic, meaning they work against what your pecs, what the pressing muscles are trying to do. They're directly antagonistic. So you could think of other muscles being like the quads and the hamstrings. Certainly those muscles have functions if you're squatting. Your hamstrings will be active to some degree, but people should not be trying to do a hamstring curl during the descent of their squat. And I think most people wouldn't really think that. They, they would be trying to stay in their legs and feel their quads and things like that. That's the same thought with bench press. We should not be actively putting ourselves in a position to where we're very much trying to use muscles that are working against the feeling of pressing the barbell. So where does it come from in the first place? Why is this so prevalent? And, and honestly, I don't know that I have a perfect answer for you. I think maybe my assumption and what I've seen kind of thrown around from other people is that this originated uh, in the equipped areas. Well, that was where powerlifting started to get bigger in the first place. And I don't have a lot of experience in a bench press shirt, so <laughs> maybe don't roast me too much here. Um, I'm hypothesizing on where this came from. But to get the barbell all the way down to your chest in a bench press shirt, it, it may take a little bit 
different approach than what we would do in raw, right? In raw powerlifting, we're not having to fight against a shirt that's actively pressing the barbell away from us. The bar will get down to your chest if you just relax, right? But for equipped powerlifting, you may have to fight a little bit more to actually get that bar all the way to your body. So some of those cues about like pulling the bar to your chest or spreading the bar or those kind of things may have taken a lot more, I don't know, taken hold in a general population a lot more for a style that may not work well for raw powerlifting. And I think we've seen some of these things with like hips back in the squat and just those kind of cues that don't transfer all that well when we don't have the shirt on. So the other claim here is that it just generally adds stability around the shoulder joint. And I think that, that this one is one that like, I don't know, logically goes the wrong direction. And a lot of times when we see people getting really squirmy in their bench press, right? Their shoulders moving around a whole lot. My feeling is it's because they're actually trying to do this. They're actively trying to squeeze their shoulders to, I mean, depression isn't as big of a deal, but they're really trying to use their upper back to help stabilize their shoulders in the bench press because they see kind of the squirming stuff happening and they're squeezing harder and harder, but that will make them actively make the pecs not be able to move as effectively. They're working against their pecs. Try squeezing your bicep while you're doing a tricep pushdown. You're just not going, going to be able to move the same way. You're, you're antagonistically working against the muscle that should be pressing hard. So people, when they start squirming around, it's essentially your body trying to find a way to make that movement happen while you are working against those muscles. So why does this potentially sometimes feel better for people in the first place? Because it's not uncommon for people to like put more effort in their upper back and feel like it may make their shoulders feel a little bit better. And I, and I do have a few thoughts here. So first and foremost, I think when people put effort into their upper back in the first place, I think generally they're probably creating just more general rigidity, but it may not be coming from specifically the right places. If you watch my leg drive video, that, that was the first video for bench press on my channel is how to use leg drive. So much of that is about trying to stabilize your back and to create an arch and to use your legs to create this stable position. And I don't think that people are going to be able to create these positions without their legs in the first place. And by using your legs, you are going to be able to create some depression and you're going to increase the height of your chest and you're going to reduce the range of motion and generally create a more stable position. So I think if people just actively start squeezing their shoulders and not doing the rest of those things, they may create some benefit where the reduction of range of motion comes in. And I'm gonna come back to that here in a little bit or just generally applying more effort kind of overall, right? Like if somebody's squatting and we start telling them, you know, they're, they're all loose and all of that, and we start telling them to, to really squeeze the bar, to do things like that, I don't know that those things directly impact the squat, but if we're just adding more attention to detail and rigidity into the system, those things probably help, especially newer lifters. But the range of motion benefit, I think is probably one of the biggest reasons why retraction can have some benefit. So when we're bench pressing, by retracting our shoulders, we are bringing our chests closer to the barbell and reducing the distance that the barbell has to travel overall. And that for sure is a good thing. So where retraction may have some sort of benefit in the bench press is particularly during the descent. That on my way down, if I can reduce the total range of motion that I have to travel at all, the lift is probably going to be easier. The issue though, is that when people try to maintain that and continue to squeeze their backs as they're pressing, that all of these issues really start to, to manifest themselves. That you start getting the, the squirm and the shoulders rising and fighting against yourself because you're not allowing the pecs to work the way that they should. If I'm actively squeezing, I'm pulling my arm backwards while my, my pec is trying to pull it forwards. So those things just don't line up. So what would my recommendation be? How, how do we find a good balance 
between some level of retraction to be able to reduce range of motion, but actually still be effective with being able to utilize our pec muscles. And the answer there goes back to leg drive. <laughs> the leg drive and the arch and, and all of those is that if you watch that video, a lot of it is about creating tension through our legs, pushing our shoulders into the bench and creating stability there. But nowhere in that are we trying to actively pull our shoulders back. So for the most part, the reductions in range of motion should come through the creation of the arch and lats pulling our shoulders down towards our hips, our hips going more into an anterior tilt and creating all of that rigidity. And I just don't think that you need to be thinking in either direction about retraction or protraction. So to be clear here, I'm not saying that you should be protracting either. I'm just saying that on a practical level, you really don't need to think about either one. And that on the descent to your chest, if you're using your legs well, and you're trying to drive your body to meet the barbell, those things will create that positive effect on the way down. And then when you press, just press. Don't think about what your shoulders are having to do. And don't think about if, you're, if your shoulders are retracted or now you're trying to, to take away that position that you originally created, your legs will be doing that for you. If you're still driving with your legs and you're pushing everything back towards the rack and then you drive yourself down to the bench, we should have that nice, stable, neutral posture and still allow ourselves to use our pecs very effectively. So, Maybe the final thought here, and, and this one um, I, I think is, is really just gonna be covered significantly more in the, the, the how to bench press guide. I'm gonna talk more about bar path and, and elbow flare and those kind of things. Along with this, the, the idea, I guess, that the lats will do a whole lot more I, is really just, again, significantly overrated, overstated. And, it's not, it's probably not going to be as damaging to the bench press as straight up retraction, right? People pulling really far into retraction, I think is going to have much more of a negative effect than people trying to cue their lats or to, you know, do those kind of things. But it still can be negative because most likely it is going to prevent somebody from unwinding and flaring their elbows in order to get the barbell over their base of support where their shoulders are. So I, again, other YouTube videos, other videos on my channel talk about this. Um, the wrist position video is actually a really good one to where we, we can highlight why it matters getting the barbell back on top of your shoulders. But for our cases here, I think sort of the same thought that retraction can have some positive benefits. People really thinking about their lats to get the bar down their chest usually takes people away from a super flared position. So that is a good thing on the way up. We want our elbows to unwind. We want to get it over our shoulders to be able to use our pecs, use our triceps most effectively. But during the descent, if I cue my lats, it may allow me to touch a little bit lower and again, reduce the range of motion, but the lats will actively be working against the upper arm. My, my lats will be pulling my upper arm into my body this way. So that may be effective on my descent, but on the ascent, when I'm pressing, my lats are not helping me press the barbell. And, and I think that is the main point here, is that if you are trying to create stability at the cost of actual efficient contraction of those muscles, then you've really gone in the wrong direction. So that's the major point here. It's just that logically, you need to ask what the main purpose of what contracting a muscle is going to create for you. If it's just stability, we get that other places. We get that from leg drive. We get it from the bench itself. <laughs> it's, it'd be hard for us to be much more stable than we already are. So beyond that, we need to think about what those muscles are actually going to be able to do to move the barbell and invest in that. So like I said, this video will um, be fit into a bigger video here coming soon. I have one more video planned on this. Um, then over time, I'll be working towards actually putting together that, uh, that how to bench press guide. So if you do have any questions on this, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I know a lot of times this is, uh, this is kind of an emotional topic for people, uh, but I'd be interested to see what your thoughts are. But if this video did help you, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.